dot dot dot. <laughs> Darkness blurs the edges of my vision. Black tendrils twist and coil around my limbs. Soft footfalls echo from the far distance, scurrying, scampering, moving in an odd rhythm with the sharp, piercing notes of her laughter. A scream threatens to burst, but my throat closes off. Ever so slowly, a chill seeps into every nerve in my body, washing away every sensation in me, apart from one. There is only fear. <laughs> Once again, her laughter echoes, a sound both bitter and unforgiving. It is the last thing I hear before she reaches for me. The ground trembles. The world slows to a stop. <gasps> Morning breaks in a blurry mess of vivid shapes and colors. Okay, so before we continue, I read somewhere that the whole branching tree thing wasn't spoilerish. So I'm just very curious to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Hopefully they weren't like freaking trolling me, so. Ah. Maybe I shouldn't. Okay, look, we can do this when I play, replay the whole thing instead. I think that's better, right? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, no, I shouldn't. I won't. Look at it. Oh, I'm so curious. Oh, well. Oddly, there's no feeling of terror or confusion gripping me, despite the vague images that has driven me from sleep. Awareness kicks in shortly, though slow and sluggish, as I blink away the last remnants of unconsciousness from my eyes. The early morning light already steams from the open windows when the memory sets in and the room finally comes into focus. Isabella's apartment. Pushing myself with pride, my eyes wander idly towards her prone form. She's hunched over the coffee table, both her arms and her head while she continues to rest. Then to the chaos of papers and folders we've left scattered over it before sleep has claimed both of us. We've bunkered down here last night. After both our nerves have had calmed down, mine for the most part, sting together was an unspoken invitation. And anyway, I'm pretty sure neither of us wants to remain alone when there's that that woman. Is she still one in the first place? Is she still one in the first place? One I would normally call a human? Can it still feel guilt? Does it understand pain? Fuck. I'd rather get charged for breaking and entering than mess with whatever that thing was any day. Not that thinking about this still matters when all our lives are in her hands. She's dangerous. If we don't do anything about her and this curse, we'll definitely be punishing Medeza soon. I can't let that happen. I've dallied on this long enough, left all my friends in harm's way after the warnings they'd left, they've all given me, besides beneath the terror and the adrenaline that keeps me running, knowing what lies ahead for Isabella makes it hard not to take action. The paper sitting on the edge of the table calls my attention at this light against my hand when I reach for it. It has caught my eye, and it had caught my eye the night before, but with the the lot we still need to go through, I've simply ignored it. The logo emblazoned at the top of the page, however, provides this paper a whole new meaning. Not for me, but definitely for her. A scholarship grant, huh? Oh. I've only ever heard her talk about this once or twice. Com completing her degree, that is. She rarely goes about it in great detail, preferring to keep it to herself. Perhaps it's the fact that she thinks she's already too old to be chasing after it. It has been five years, after all, but I've caught enough snippets of conversation between her and Zack to know she has never given up on it. Despite how things have panned out with her father, she's one step closer to this part of her life. As silly as this may sound, coming from a friend, I... I'd like to give her the chance to have this. Whether this means stepping out of my comfort zone and figuring out what the deal with this curse is, then I'll do so. 
if only to see that same smile on her from that time again. These days, the only moments she seems to show it is when she's asleep. Like right now, no matter how uncomfortable she appears. A smile of my own forms, despite this, when I glance at her sleeping form again. She hasn't moved since, her shoulders rising and falling in a slow, even rhythm with her breathing. You won't think she has any problems this way. If only that were true. Sighing, I place the paper back where I've gotten it carefully so I won't accidentally accidentally so I won't accidentally wrinkle or damage it in some way, and finally push myself off my makeshift bed. Isabella shifts when I carry her off from the floor and over to her bed, but doesn't wake up. Simply tucks I simply tuck No, simply tucks herself comfortably under the covers that I pull over her. Briefly, though, she mumbles something to herself and draws in another deep breath. Becca, Ashton's being dumb again. She drifts back to a deeper state of sleep after, like it hasn't been interrupted by the slightest movement earlier, with the small smile on her lips remain. Once I find myself returning... Wait, what? Oh, one, not once, I see. <laughs> I'm blind. One, I find myself returning. In kind? What, what? I don't know. Okay, let's just ignore this. Who sleeps like a rock now? It's better this way. Better to leave her to her dreams for the moment, which I hope are better than the ones I've had. She'll have time to worry about our problems later when she wakes up. For now, this will be another thing I don't want to take away from her. A moment of respite, no matter how fleeting. She deserves, she deserves it. After everything she has been put through, what I put her through. In the meantime, I still have two other people I need to check with. Isabella would definitely get in a tizzy if I don't check on them. Cole looks for an air and meets me upon stepping out to the hallway. So this is the 30th. Um, is it this the. Wait. Okay, so this is the day Rebecca figures this out, and Ashton would call us later. Right, so we don't know much from this day, and I think it was the 28th when poor McCullough got trapped. Yeah, we gotta rescue her. She's probably, she might already be dead by now. No, I think it's three days you can go without drinking water. I think it's, isn't it free? Like, 72 hours? Hopefully. For her. Okay. It was at the night, too, I think. No. No, it was the middle of the day. It was in the middle of the day. Never mind. Okay. Cole Lexborn Air meets me upon stepping out of the hallway. Not unusual in itself. This is what Lexborn's sweater is supposed to be. A bit cold. Damn, for the most part. And more often than not terribly drab with an occasional sprinkling of rain every few hours. The sky is still cl clear, but I'll give it a day or two before the weather takes a turn for the worse. I've complained about the whole, about the awful rains for years, despite having lived here my entire life. I have to admit, though, seeing it return to the usual feels extremely reassuring. At least something's still normal in the world when I can no longer think the same for the situation we're in. A nightmare. That's probably all this is. Usually I'll say, I've been through worse, but that's simply not a lie I've often told myself, haven't I? And I've fed myself a great deal of lies through the years, just so I won't have to think about it the next day. Maybe we won't even have this problem if I haven't, if I hadn't been running away and ignoring things. Hiding them someplace no one else, no one will see because I've since believed doing so is such show of weakness. The fuck do I know about ghosts, though? What does Zack know? What does Becca know? Seaman has mentioned dreaming about a woman. Whether it's the same one we've been seeing, I've yet to ask. Bottom line, he likely knows as much about this as I do. Hell, Rebecca is probably in the same boat, grasping for anything that might provide an answer or way out of this. What can any of us do? When all of us lacks any understanding of what's happening. One thing's clear about this, however. That thing is after us because... Because of the letter. Both Rebecca and Zack have seen it, too. 
she will go after them as well. Yet yeah, here I am, walking up Rebecca, waking up Be walking up Becca's door. Oh, walking up. I'm, I'm on fire today. Yet yeah, here I am, walking up Becca's door, one slow step at a time. A stalling tactic to allow myself some time to put the mess in my head in a better order. How to phrase this when there's phrase? How to face? How to face this when there's a 90% chance she's still pissed about a whole different matter. It's the only reason we didn't check on her last night, aside from their ungodly hour Isabella and I arrived. We'll only allow her by... Uh, <laughs> we'll only alarm her by showing up in her home in the middle of the night, acting like babbling lunatics. And her anger can last quite a while. These days, it seems the only one she can easily forgive is Isabella. But even with her, Becca's fuming still takes hours. I run my hand through my hair and straighten out my jacket before knocking. Once, twice, and three times just to be sure she has heard me, even if she is asleep. She's usually awake by now, though. Hey, Becca, it's Ash. Open up. Don't tell me you're still in bed. Seconds tick by. No answer from her, and Red is starting to creep up. She's probably already at the library, right? I've been trained to handle dire situations, but the feeling has been doing but the feeling has been doing that quite frequently since last night. My mind begins to anticipate the worst, and in the next minute, concern has mixed in with my thoughts and I bang my first my fist on the door louder this time. She'll definitely be livid, but I'd rather face her wrath than a dead body. Becca! It's Ash! There's something we need to talk about right away. Open up, I know you're- Your girlfriend left early this morning, pretty boy. So if you could do us a bloody favor and shut up, that'd be real fucking polite. My hand pauses short of landing another heavy knock. From the other unit, Rebecca's other neighbor peeks in through his door, though I see nothing but a bundle of blankets. I'll say they need, need help from being devoured by their sheets, but it sounds like he's just fine. He's a huge ash ass. <laughs> I seriously was going to call him Ashhole. Man. Isabella, she's been influencing me. He's a huge asshole too. Course of action, so people like him won't ruin your day. Act like the nicest person on the planet. It's done me wonders when I was a rookie patrolling the streets. No need to match his temper. Oh, did she say where she was going? I don't know. She said something about meeting someone or something, in case Filipina girl over there asks. Well, what am I, her keeper? You know, some people want to sleep in on a bloody Sunday, so keep it down. I was looking forward to this weekend. Thanks, you damn git. Well, there's no need to be an ass about it. I'll get out of your- Sometimes the door shut without warning but not before muttering a string of very colorful words about me. Oh, great. Probably thinks I won't hear him inside the four walls of his apartment. Jerk. And at the end of it, I sigh. So, Rebecca's not here. I must have missed her by an hour or so. But at least she's not alone. She should be safe, in theory. Yeah, not so much, but we... we managed. We did. We managed, I think. We did pretty good. I wonder if she could die there. More so if the person she's meeting with is who I am thinking. Nevertheless, I still can't help but worry. It's an easy thing, continuing down increasingly darkened lines of thought, to act brashly, to find out where she is and go straight there without deliberating on my actions first. There's sack too, boot. Uh, Rebecca's not alone, but I can't say the same for the big guy. A simple phone call to the both of them should do the trick. It'll ease my nerves at any rate. It's better than rushing over to Sack's place or assuming Rebecca's whereabouts and finding out they're not where I guess they should have been. Assuming the worst will come next, which I'd rather avoid this early. Any other reason, I won't bother them, but an emergency begs for urgency. This is one, right? Even if it isn't, anxiety from concern dulls judgment. Something 
I most certainly can't afford to lose at any given time, especially right now. Any means to calm it will do wonders for the muddled mess my mind is already in. Oh. Pulling up my phone, I thumb through the screen until it ends up in a group with only Sax, Rebecca's, and Isabella's numbers listed. Other people would probably say I keep too few friends when they chance on this. To some extent, it's true. I can easily name about a hundred people I've been acquainted with for the years. Colleagues, blockmates from uni, uni <laughs> neighbors, those are people. We all come and go. But these three, these three have chosen to stay for some reason. Without wanting or asking for anything. Unlike the others. None has Sack's kindness, Rebecca's patience, nor the sincerity in Isabel's eyes. One day, these guys are just there. The next thing I know, being with them eases it. That heavy, somber feeling lingering in the air when you stand alone in your apartment, or something as simple as spending your day off without anyone. I'll say it's loneliness, but this carries much more depth than that. If I can help it. I don't want to lose any of them to some stupid curse. A phone call may be the least comforting thing at the moment. Honestly, I prefer being in the same room with them right now, but I'll take what I can get. Becca first. She'll get angry at me for worrying about her. She isn't some helpless damsel in distress, after all. She isn't a shy little girl I knew when we were children. We're already far from the people we were back then, but that's more than enough reason to check in on her. I don't have to imagine her taking anything head on. She'll do it instead of asking for help when she needs it. I don't care if she gets mad at me, if only to know that she's fine. A ring in the silence of the hallway, it sounds it sound alone might as well be sharp enough to pierce through my ears. Another second passes. Two, three. But when on the ninth ring it goes straight to her voicemail, a cold feeling instantly lodges in my stomach. Rebecca Gales here. You've reached my voicemail. Sorry if I can't get to you right now. Oh, and if this is Isabella, yes, you're free to reheat the food in my fridge. Otherwise, leave a message. Probably just busy, that's all. Though I still barely manage to keep my voice even when I speak. Hey, Becca, call me back when you're free. We need to talk. ASAP. Becca will be alright. It's alright. She's safe. She's with someone else. In the event that woman shows up, she'll have someone with her. Someone she'll be able to ask for her help. She's safe. She can handle herself. Becca might have a fiery temper. But she knows when she's faced with something she can't handle herself. Rebecca will see my Miss Colin. She'll call me back. Though I don't express it enough, Rebecca is someone I consider important to me. She's been my friend for the longest. Anybody else would have been fed up with me and left. The girl stuck by me, no matter how big of a jerk I'd been. There's Zack and Isabella now too, of course. I'll always be thankful for having them around. The worst times before, however, Becca was there. No one believes it when I say it, but I've surely had my awful moments as a bratty kid and a horrible teen. Issues. I have too many of them to count and refuse to deal with for a time. At least that's what Andrew likes to tell me. I tend to think nothing of it. It all smelled low down over the years thanks to a professor mostly. But at times, I do wonder if it still burdens me the way it did all those years ago. After all, I was terrible, especially around the time of my parents' separation. Looking back at it now, I had a reason to direct all my frustration towards everyone else. While I wasn't a kid who lashed out at anyone, preferring to keep it to myself and turning those negative feelings into more productive things, I've grown distant from a lot of people because of it. From my old friends back in my old school and the neighbors I've hung out with before moving. A habit I've likely brought with me into adulthood. I was just so angry with everyone and everything. All I kept thinking about was my s health. Wondering why me? In retrospect, I was a selfish little bastard who thought the world revolved around me. That I shouldn't have been going through it. 
I believe my behavior was entitled that I had the right. The times, tough times, but she stuck with me, snapped me out of my little sulk, as she often phrases it. Whenever she sees the chance to bring it up, she didn't tolerate my bullshit, but she didn't leave me alone either. If anything, the whole thing made her stick around. Her concern may have grown a bit overbearing as the years went by, but she's still an old friend nevertheless. I owe her a lot. That won't change. Damn it. Where are you, Becca? I don't have a message left in her voicemail. Then on my third call, I hang up. For the time being, I can't do anything more than to wait for her to return my calls. Roaring aimlessly won't get me anywhere. Second, on the hand, that guy attracts trouble no matter how much he tries to avoid it. Doesn't help how he hasn't been too hot lately with a lot of people. Oh, so this is right. I remember then. Oh, Zach, we were trying to call Ashton. Like, why, why aren't you picking up? And you know, they had a, like they were discussing like how he tried to call him and he didn't answer. All right. So he's getting spooked by the ghost woman right now. His mention of plans yesterday doesn't sit too well with me either. He might be the next responsible adult after Rebecca out of the four of us, but I've still got a check on the big guy. Make sure he's doing okay at the very least. Whatever he has planned on doing. All I'm asking is for it to not to be idiotic. He's a sensible guy, I'm sure. However, desperation clings and pushes people to do things, rational or irrational. It doesn't matter. Clear thinking flies out the window the moment you're in danger, and I sincerely hope he has not found himself in a tricky situation. His phone doesn't even ring before he answers, or his voicemail at least. Hey, it's Zach. Well, a voicemail anyway. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, uh, just leave a message, okay, yeah? Okay, so his phone is like doesn't have any reception at all. Interesting. And no, Ash, you're not allowed to lockpick your way into my apartment again. Just do what any other decent human being does and call if I'm not around. Thanks. Um, dude, that's what I'm doing right now. Right. Moving on. Did he turn it off? Why? I don't want to assume the worst yet. And maybe he has forgotten to charge it? can't be. The guy can be a bit of a boy scout. Even more than I am as a cop. He's the type who has an extra battery or power bank in his bag if he ever needs it. And he always does. He won't say anything or brag about it, but he's got qu a quiet roster of VIP freelance clients. He won't just leave his phone dead in case he's on the field, particularly when people will likely be looking for him. He always leaves his connection open whenever clients or his friends need him. Zack is reliable like that. Why isn't anyone answering? His mobile in an out of range area sounds more plausible, although the thought of it doesn't completely shake off the unease. Unlike Rebecca and I, he took the time to listen to what Isabella said. And even if he didn't believe it, he was definitely the first one to offer help or try to do something about it. If he ends up troubling if he ends up trouble doing whatever it is, if he oh, if he ends up in trouble doing whatever it is, so help me, I'm going to. Well, I can't be rash. I'm aware of that. Been running the same reminder in my head since last night. But if something happens, I'm certain my reaction won't be pretty. Yo, Zach, call me back, all right? I wanted to check in and uh, yeah, just please call me back. It's usually a joke between us when I say Mr. Watson to my Sherlock. I don't see him as some assistant to put aside until he is needed, like some people like to believe, though. He's not some pity friend I keep around to make myself look good. If anything, he's the one who stayed by me out of pity. Zach's the one who puts up with me most of the time, even when he doesn't need to. It's not a case of a cool cop who helped out a minority. In truth... I was a hard-headed, hot-tempered, and reckless rookie up until I met him. It wasn't anything sudden, and some part of me is still that rookie. But I've grown, thanks to him. He tempers that part of me. Considering how our first impressions went, I'm lucky he stuck around. 
Becky and I may have spent a lot of years together as children, but Zach, he's, he's probably the closest thing I'll call to a best friend. Though it's more than that. Uh, a camaraderie. A camaraderie no words can express. He has my back and I'll always have his. He's a brother I've never had the luck of ever having. Only child and all. And I have every reason to worry about my brother. Becca's neighbor did say she went out to meet with someone. No, suspic no specific names. If I'm wrong and she's not with Professor Clark, then maybe it's with Zack. They've never been close, but it's not the kind of awkward friendship or meeting to get remains out of the question. Regardless, I continue dialing for his phone up another few times, like I've done with Becca's. In the end, after the third attempt with no one answering, I stop and move to cut the call with a ragged exhale. Waiting game it is, then. I've been trained for those. Hell, I'm sh used to them, just, just not when it comes to people I'm close to. Much as I keep reminding myself to maintain a level head, it's a whole different matter when it's someone you know. Personal feelings will likely get involved at some point. It's starting now, actually, with the anxious strings coiling and uncoiling, causing a racket inside my stomach. And that's exactly when the line finally connects. Before he even speaks, my question has already slipped out, including every pent of pent up worry and tension in my body. Where are you? The line's choppy, though I can still make out the words he's saying. Nothing to worry about then. He's just some place where network cover coverage is shitty. Can't imagine we're at this time of the morning, though. Did he go out for a jog? What was that, Ash? Could you repeat that? Signal shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes now. What kind of shithole did you get into? I meant that to sound as friendly as possible to keep things light, at least. Instead, only the frustration shows in my tone. Good morning to you, too. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. I thought you'd be... What mansion? Do I really need to answer that? Why are you even... Please don't tell me that's his plan. A morning visit to the mansion will look right is? Of all the pig-headed things to do right now, it's the best thing you can come up with? Breaking and entering? I've got a plenty of reasons to rail at him right now. Although no matter how much I want to give him a piece of my mind, unfortunately... It's not the time. No. No, wait. <sighs> Just get your ass to Isabella's place and hurry. He pauses a moment, a second of indecision while he seems to contemplate his options. H how urgent is this? In truth, the question, the hesitance and his indecision in his voice has caught me completely off guard and understanding dawns on me. His decision to go there isn't one born out of a stupid impulse. He must have found something. However, no matter how urgent it is, he still shouldn't have gone there, alone at least. Despite myself, in that split second of comprehension, I allow it to show. A weakness. A simple request framing with every unease and disquiet causing turmoil within me since last night. It bears a selfish hope that he'll understand, even though the uns unstable signal that whatever's keeping him there be willing to set it aside for now. Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. Please, Zack. Silence fills the other end of the line again. For a long moment, I assume he won't head it. heat it and I'll have to drive there myself. Just to drag him away from whatever danger he's skirting. Thankfully, he agrees. I'll be there in a few. Uh, an hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll see you. Leaf washes over me as soon as the call ends. After that close call, Ashen spent the night at Isabella's, only to be kept awake by nightmares at an utter loss, and with all of his beliefs overturned, Ashton decides to check on Zachary and Rebecca. Unfortunately, only Zachary returns his call. This is while she's at the library. Okay. Alright. Wait, what? <laughs> Shouldn't it be, like, after the incoming call? Ah, uh, well. Alright. 
totally washes over me as soon as the call ends. Normally, I don't let myself a moment of respite in times like this. Gotta stay alert. Rebecca's still out there, has yet to return any of my messages. But for the moment, I relish in it. This is probably the first time I've permitted myself to do so since last night. Even the muscles in my shoulders have been complaining from all the tension I've taken on. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grip my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. That's what I am in the face of this. A mad dash around Larksborn and Anselm isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across them on the side of the road during a drive. The city's too big a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if I even glimpse the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies, I slip back into Spell's apartment and close the door behind me. I might have already grown used to this, but the waiting will always, always be the hardest part. More so when it's the people you care about. 